What's going on, everybody? Your main man, Zero Wow here. I just want to come give you guys something that I have been dying to do since I started doing these reviews of all the classes and specs, but more so f just for the hunters. Uh, I don't really feel led to do this for any other class just because, you know, it's my class. I've played it for 11 years. It was what I was first introduced to playing WoW. Matter of fact, I leveled two hunters to level 30 and then ended up deleting them because they were on a separate account. So I had leveled two hunters to level 30. So combined, I got I did 60 levels in vanilla before I finally got my own account and leveled my own main hunter, the one I've had for 11 years, up to level 60. So I did 90, no, I did 120 levels of content on a hunter just in vanilla. And then, of course, all the different incarnations and changes that have happened since. Across all three specs, the hunters have gotten changed the most. Um, you know, that's not to take anything away from other specs that have gotten major changes for certain classes, like Boomkins with Astral Power, or, you know, Shadow Priest with their Void Forms, you know, or even, you know, Outlaw Rogues, you know, Combat Rogues getting changed to Outlaw Rogues, having some semi-rage abilities there, or Shamans having Maelstrom now. You know, it's not to take anything away from them, but I think overall, top to bottom, besides the new class Demon Hunters themselves, the Hunters got the most amount of change. Not just in their rotation, not just in the, the, the delivery of how their damage is, is put out, but also in, in survivability, mobility. Um, just sheer, you know, common things that you would think were common sense just aren't there anymore so blizzard has made some i'm not gonna sit here and slam blizzard for this because i mean my god it's their game they can do whatever they want but honestly i just want to take a minute and blizzard if anybody who works for blizzard knows somebody who works at blizzard is watching this please just bear with me on this video i'm gonna go step by step by step on every single talent that you guys have given us and why I think it needs to have some additional changes made to them. And uh, it's going to be for talents and honor talents. Now, as far as honor fact traits, I already went over those in the actual individual hunter videos, but I may just go ahead and throw those in towards the end. But we're going to go ahead and just cover talents and honor talents here first. And I'm going to mention a few baseline abilities that need to get changed too. So let's do this. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and cover our baseline abilities for all Hunter Specs. Now, I'm not going to mention this again, so listen up. Aspect of the Cheetah needs to go to a 1 minute cooldown. Okay? Aspect of the Cheetah, 1 minute cooldown, increases movement speed by 90% for 3 seconds. Let's say, and then 30% for another 7 seconds. Okay? Now, I say that because of this. You'll nerf the duration of it, of the 30% boost, but... What you're going to add to this is you're going to add an immunity to snares and movement and pairing effects to the first initial three second burst of speed. Okay? The reason for this is because we don't have old school aspect of the cheetah anymore. So there's no way for us to increase our movement speed at all. Besides this. At all. You know, there's post haste. But, I mean, that was pretty much a given. We've always had post haste. So, I mean, besides something we've always had this is our only way of increasing our movement speed and it's pretty lousy so you need to give it reduce its cooldown to a minute increase our movement speed by 90 percent sure keep that for the first three seconds but add an immunity to snares for that initial three second burst and then drop off the movement and speed increase to 30 percent as it as it is but reduce that duration from nine to seven just so cheetah just lasts a full 10 seconds that way, it's a 10 second duration, end of discussion, alright, so you kind of incorporate Cheetah with Master's Call at the same time, okay? So, kind of bring those back. Okay, something I wanted to bring up about healing for all specs, I forgot this, we went over baseline ability for Aspect of the Cheetah, 
how it needed to get changed. I also want to talk about exhilaration. Okay, so exhilaration is a two minute snap, oh snap heal that heals for crap for BM and survival both. Uh, this is what I recommend changing. Getting rid of exhilaration altogether and bringing spirit bond back. Bring spirit bond back for all three hunters. Give us that 2% heal every four seconds. If you don't want it to be three seconds like it was before, you know, nerf it to four seconds. I don't really care. We need supplemental healing. We need it. We need it terribly. Because this being on a two minute cooldown sucks. Okay? Just want to throw that out there. Every hunter across the board, all three specs, gets Spirit Bond back. Gets that passive 2 or 3% health back every 4 or 5 seconds. Period. End of discussion. Okay? But, if you were to play Marksmanship and you were to take Lone Wolf, that is when you replace Spirit Bond with Exhilaration. That is the only time Exhilaration will be there and it will be a 50% heal for the Marksmanship Hunter on a 2 minute cooldown. That's it. That's it. In a nutshell, that's all we needed. That's all I wanted to talk about. I wanted to just talk about the two abilities, two baseline abilities for all three Specs of Hunters that needed to get changed. That's it. Let's continue. Alright, so starting out, Beast Mastery. Here's the Beast Mastery talent tree right here. If you've been on WoW Ahead for any number of weeks and months, you know what this is. You've seen all these. We even went over all these in the video, so I'm not going to dive too much into these individually. Now, as far as spec changes go, Intimidation needs to be baseline for Bestial Wrath. It's going to be baseline for Bestial Wrath now. That is that is what needs to happen in order for Beast Mastery Hunters to be truly effective in any environment whether it's pvp or pve because this causes high amount of threat so it's useful in pve just as useful as it would be in pvp so this needs to happen regardless this needs to be baseline period end of discussion across the board okay so that was going to be the very first thing we were going to talk about in beast your wrath or beast mastery now let's move on to the second one the second one of course being dash now this is going to affect all hunters this entire row is going to affect all hunters so when we get to the actual you know, my personal talent trees that I made up, I'll show you guys what this row is going to talk about. But this was the big one, too. Now, the other big one was going to be Stampede. Stampede, right now, as you guys saw in my video, the damage can be completely avoided. The damage can be completely avoided, so it needs to get somewhat looked at. Uh, what I came up with is really nice. It kind of combines Stampede with what it was before in Warlords of Draenor. You summon, like additional beasts to come to your aid but there's also other benefits and it's not that the pets damage it's not those pets that are doing damage because the way I think of it they're just additional dire beasts and dire beasts don't really do a whole lot of great deal of damage they're just there to give you focus so that's another heads up that was another major change that I made and this entire level 75 tier got completely overhauled alright this level 90 tier stayed the same. I didn't really come up with anything new with it. And as far as this level 45 tier, again, just to touch on it briefly, these two got some additional mechanic buffs, and Dash got completely thrown out and replaced with an old school vanilla ability. Okay, the rest of these just get minor changes. One with the pack did get a nice little change. Beastial Fury got a little bit of a nerf, but Blink Strikes got a little bit of a buff. So, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to note about Intimidation. It needs to incorporate the teleportation from Blink Strikes. Take the Blink, take the Blink, the teleportation from Blink Strikes, and incorporate it into Intimidation. That way it's an instantaneous 30-yard teleport for your pet to instantly stun a target. That way it's a on-demand stun, can't be dodged, blocked, or parried. Okay? There you go. Alright, now let's move on to what I have listed. Alright, boys, this is the talent trees that I came up with. I designed these myself. Now, mostly everything is the same, except Blink Strikes got changed to Cobra Strikes. This level 75 tier got completely overhauled. I brought in two new forms of CC to replace the old ones. Wavering Sting stayed, and like I said, Stampede got completely overhauled. So let's just go ahead and step by step through these. Okay, so Big Game Hunter maintains the increased critical strike chance, but now it applies a 30% bleed effect from those critical strikes. So it kind of takes what Careful Aim has from our marksmanship and it, and it incorporates this into Big Game Hunter. Because honestly, I had an issue with this before with Beast Mastery Hunters not having any way to prevent rogues from getting back into stealth unless you took Aspect of the Beast. 
You need some sort of a bleed effect. You need some kind of a damage over time effect. It's not much. It's not huge. It's not like it's going to be ticking for like, you know, 30, 40k. No, it's just something to help aid the hunter keeping targets in combat. Alright. The way of the Cobra. Okay, so this just, originally this just increased Cobra Shots damage, but now I'm made to incorporate multi shots damage. If Beast Mastery Hunters are supposed to be using multi shot, because if, as you guys watch my Beast Mastery video, the artifact traits get three, straight up three traits in there that are supposed to make, make you want to use multi shot. Well, if I'm going to be using multi shot and it's going to cost me 40 focus, it damn well sure better be doing damage. So, I changed Way of the Cobra to buff multi-shot, as well as Cobra Shot. Okay, so, Dire Stable. This stayed the, fa this stayed the same. 12 additional focus for both Dire Beast and Dire Frenzy. So, let's move on to Stomp. Alright, so, Stomp was the only thing in this tier originally that didn't give any focus. I changed that. I changed it now to whenever your Dire Beast stomps out on the ground and damages all nearby enemies, this will generate two focus for every target hit by that Stomp. It's not a great deal of focus. But, think of this as like multi-shot for, for Marksman Hunters. To me, that's not too much to ask for. This way you actually get a little bit of focus from everything in this tier, regardless of what you choose. This actually makes Stomp really nice for you to have in, an, in a PvE situation, especially. Because you, you know, you're in a high-end raid or a dungeon, and there's you know, five or six or seven or eight you know, low-end mobs running around. You can just summon a Dire Beast, you run, you're, low on, you're running low on focus, boom. There's about you know, 10 to... 16 focus for you instantly. It's not, like I said, it's not an, an enormous amount. Heck, that's not even half a Cobra Shot's cost, but it's better than nothing. Alright, so, Dire Frenzy. Now this, I actually did tweak this a little bit. I didn't change the attack speed, I didn't change its mechanic. The only thing I changed was I reduced its focus regeneration from 25 to 24. I know, it's not much, but I did that because I also reduced its cooldown from 15 seconds to 12 seconds, so it would match Dire Beast, okay? There was no reason for Dire Frenzy to be you know, three three seconds long and longer of a cooldown. It really didn't matter. So let's just bring this back down to earth, so that way it doesn't throw off your rotation that much. So you can, you know, that way your your timing doesn't get thrown off if you switch these two up. But now it generates focus over its eight second duration instead of just instantly, because that really throws you off. If you're if you get you know you're so used to using dire beast, and then all of a sudden you take dire frenzy, and you're getting like freaking you know. 25 to 37 focus instantaneously that's 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 no good you that it needs to be over time that was the whole purpose of dire beast design so dire frenzy needs to incorporate that same design okay so chimera shot didn't change anything here except for one thing it's unaffected by the global cooldown because if you take this as it stands normally chimera shot feels really 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 clunky so i changed that to incorporate kind of what fire mages have with having access to abilities off the global cooldown. So you could be in the middle of, you know, using, you know, spamming Cobra Shot, Kill Command, Cobra Shot, Kill Command, and be able to squeeze in a Chimera Shot. That way you can keep that rotation going. To me, that just makes all the sense in the world. The level 45 tier. Now this, like I said, this I tweaked a little bit. Uh, I incorporated a lot of glyphs from Warlords into these, like Glyph of Liberation. I incorporated into Post Haste. Post Haste, again, dispels all movement pairing effects and boost your movement speed by 60% for 8 seconds. Okay, it does the same thing it's always done. But, now you are also healed for 4% of your maximum health when you activate Disengage. Now before everybody goes to the comment section that doesn't play a hunter and says, Oh, it's overpowered. Dude, Disengage is a 20 second cooldown. 4% health every 20 seconds is not overpowered. Mages get freaking, you know, well, fire mages really, because that's, that's in their artifact trait. So, you know what I mean? If a mage can heal for 15% of his health, every 15 seconds plus it's on two charges so actually that's 15 percent of his health every seven or eight seconds this is not too much to ask okay so now we're moving on to far strider far strider got buffed i buffed this from 10 percent to 15 percent chance to reset the cooldown on disengage or harpoon but this also increases the distance traveled by disengage okay don't worry it also increases the range of Harpoon as well, but since this isn't a survival spec, I just left it as Disengage. So you remember the Glyph of Disengage, it increased the distance traveled by Disengage? Gets incorporated into Far Strider. Alright, now this is an old school ability. This replaced Dash. Surefooted used to be a survival talent back in, back in Vanilla and in BC. I brought this back in place of Dash and actually made it, you know, com 
actually made it competitive with post haste and far strider. You have a 25% chance to resist movement pairing effects. Also reduces the cooldown of disengage by 10 seconds. So now disengage is a flat 10 second cooldown. But there's no heal. It doesn't increase its distance. But it is a 10 second cooldown. And you do have a 25% chance to resist movement and pairing effects. So crippling poison, hamstring, wing clip, frost nova, so on and so forth. All those abilities, the hunter's going to have a one fourth chance to resist it. So, it's not overpowered. It's just like Surefoot it used to be back in the old days. But again, this row right here felt way too one-sided. It felt like you were always taking post haste regardless of what you were doing. This actually makes this competitive. Okay? Alright, so moving on to the level 60 tier. Alright, so everybody and their brother was all about Bestial Fury. Why well, I nerfed this? I'm going to go over this first. Originally, it increased the damage bonus... You, you and your pets received from Beast of Wrath by 15%. Now it's just you. Only you get additional 15% from Beast of Wrath. Your pets stay at the stock 26% from Beast of Wrath passively and the artifact trait buffing it. But only you get this 15% bonus. So where you're doing 41% more damage, your pets are only doing 26% damage because this was overpowered. I'm not going to lie. Our burst with Bestial Fury was nuts. It needed to get it needed to get nerfed. But, 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 this is great because now you have an option. Do I want to be the one that's doing all the, do I want to be the one that's doing most of the damage as a Beast of Wrath Hunter? Do I, do I, the Hunter, want to be doing most of the damage? Or do I want my pets to do most of the damage? And that's where I changed Blink Strikes and renamed it Cobra Strikes. And now, your pets, your pets and Guardians, this includes your Dire Beast now. Your pets and Dire Beast damage is increased by 15% and they have a 15% increased critical strike chance. Now this is at all times. So it takes that 15% from Bestial Fury and gives it to your pets at all times. Not just when Bestial Wrath is active. And they also have a 15% increased critical strike chance. So now only you and your pets get a 26% increase from Bestial Wrath, but your pets are now passively doing 15% more damage and have a 15% increased critical strike chance. I mean, do you want do you want to be the one doing all the damage, or do you want your pets being the ones doing all the damage? This is a great little change of pace here. I love this. This actually makes these two very competitive. Whereas in Blink, Blink Strikes originally, you know, number-wise it did more damage, but if you poured all your points in your artifact trait, well then Beast of Fear was obviously going to be the hands-down choice. But now, even if you did put all your points into the buffing Beast of Wrath in your artifact trait, you would still have a hard time figuring out which one of these does more damage. Because Beast of Fury, again, only buffs your damage. It doesn't buff your pets. Whereas in Cobra Strikes, buffs just your pets. Alright, so one with the pack. This percentage stayed the same, but I added a little something there at the end. Grants Wild Call 15% increased chance to reset cooldown on Dire Beast or Dire Frenzy. But I added this. Also, you are granted an additional charge to Dire Beast or Dire Frenzy. So instead of just having that stock one Dire Beast, that stock one Dire Frenzy, you now have access to two. Okay. So now you can actually take advantage of the increased haste from Dire Frenzy. You know what I'm saying? You can take advantage of the increased focus. You know what I'm saying? So you could actually benefit from this a lot. But the problem with one with the pack was is that you weren't getting really any damage out of this. So the fact that you can actually stack back-to-back -back Dire Frenzies would be really nice. Or you could stack back-to-back -back Dire Beast and take away the Cobra and buff your Cobra shot by, you know, what, 8, 16, 24, 32% with two Dire Beasts and both your pets out. So this actually makes way of the Cobra way more attractive now that you have access to an additional charge of Dire Beast or Dire Frenzy. So liked this change I really thought changing this changing this row up was gonna be really tough but I found a way to do it and I love what I came up with what do you guys think all right so moving on this next tier right here is I just <laughs> I kept shaking my head at this CC on on BM side and I was like my god BM just like they're not marksmanship hunters why do they have things like binding shot or, or well, essentially, they were all having the same crowd control. And Intimidation was supposed to be a baseline ability like it was years ago. It doesn't need to be a talent. So what I did was, is I changed these up. I brought Bear Trap back from Wads, from Warlords of Draenor's Alpha. And I brought in a new ability I made called Swarm of Bees. Let's check this out. 
Throw a vial of potent honey at a target location. Overwhelmed by a swarm of bees, all targets within five yards become disoriented. It's a six second duration, 30 second cooldown. So this is essentially an AOE scatter shot. It's what this is. It's essentially what it is. Now, you're probably wondering why isn't this 45 seconds? Because, you know, binding shot does the same thing. Well, binding shot is a stun. So that means the target can take damage while they're inside that. If damage is done to a target while it's disoriented, they're going to break out of it. So this is this can be a 30 second cooldown. It's not too overpowering. Or you take Waver and Sting, which I brought back to in, being instant cast with a 30 second cooldown. Yeah, the cast time is gone, and it's no longer a 45 second cooldown because that was just garbage. Since we don't have freeze traps anymore, BM and MM need this to be instant cast. And they need it to have a 30 second cooldown. Period. End of discussion. This can this basically replaces freeze trap for us. All right. Now bear trap. Place a bear trap at a target location that immobilizes the enemy for 20 seconds, dealing bleed damage over the 20 seconds. Other damage may break the effect. Trap exists for one minute, 30 second cooldown. So we actually get an option to get a trap. So this is kind of like Steel Trap from Survival Hunter's Talent Tree, but it's not near as powerful. But, but I digress, this can really aid you when it comes to kiting targets. So this is essentially going to be like Snake Trap was for, for Survival Hunters, well, all Hunters in War of the Draenor. You could use this to kite with very well. So there you go. There's your new means of crowd control. Now, remember, Intimidation would be baseline in this setup so you'd have access to intimidation and one of these three forms of CC a root and a bleed or an inca incapacitation or an AOE disorient alright so this level 90 tier stays the same volley barrage murder crows don't change nothing here these stay the exact same alright so let's go ahead and look at aspect of the beast we'll get the stampede here in a minute it was the biggest change that I that I made on on this lower end so aspect of the beast I Tweaked these benefits a little bit. Uh, Ferocity now heals you for half of the bleed damage that is caused by Kill Command. Because when Kill Command's used with Aspect of the Beast, it now causes the target to bleed for about 200% damage. Well, this would also heal you for half that damage during its duration. It's not a huge heal. It's not even really noticeable. Uh, tenacity, you know, I hate the fact that no hunter, we never see tenacity pets in PvP, or even ferocity pets for that matter. So, I thought, well, let's give hunters really a hard choice to go into choosing what specialization their pet's going to be. Something they can actually benefit from in PvE and PvP. So, ferocity grants you access to additional damage plus a, a small heal. Tenacity gives you increased defensives and survivability for both you and your pet by reducing damage you both take by 10%. So now you don't have to feel guilty about losing Roar or Sacrifice. And Cunning, if you decide to stick with Cunning, which is what most hunters run in PvP, you will now be able to perma-slow a target. I think this would be awesome. This would be a great benefit. It would be a hard choice between... This is actually a tar hard choice now between this, Killer Cobra, or Stampede. Alright, so let's move on to the changes I made to Killer Cobra. Alright. Actually, I didn't make any changes to this. It stayed the same. While Bestial Wrath is active, Cobra Shot resets to cooldown to Kill Command. This is exactly what it was before. Okay. Moving on to Stampede. Now, this is the big one that got changed. Okay, so you guys remember how it, like, everything went in a straight line, right? This is what I changed this to. Summons five Wild Beasts to attack your primary target, generating 10 focus per second, and increases the damage of all your pets and dire beasts by 25% for 10 seconds. Three minute cooldown. So this is essentially beast your wrath for your pets. And you have access to a ton of focus. So think of like combining beast your wrath with aspect of the wild. This is essentially what Stampede is now, but it's still a three minute cooldown. So I thought that was a really nice change, something that really needed to happen. Uh, Cause Stampede just felt so weak and had a piss poor mechanic. Damage can be avoided easily, so let's change it up to something that, you know, these five wild beasts basically act like dire beasts, and they'll attack whatever you're attacking. So there's no freaking, you know, completely avoiding the damage. So there you go. That's the changes I made to BM's talent trees. 
what do you guys think take to the comment section let me know I'm gonna go ahead and jump on down here and let's continue on with the honor talents okay so these are the honor talents for BM this is what I came up with uh, well no this is what Blizzard came up with and I'm gonna go ahead and just briefly touch on a couple of things uh, for BM none of these are really terrible uh, this, these first four rows are okay. They're not great. I don't really. I like Viper Sting, but I don't really like Scorpius Sting. I especially don't like Spider Sting, because think about this for a minute. Sting is a target with a potent Spider Venom for five seconds. Their next offensive spell cast silences them. Okay. Well, Scorpius Sting reduces their physical critical strike chance by fifty percent, and but Viper Sting reduces their healing them by thirty percent. Does anybody start to notice a pattern here? This can only be used on classes that can heal themselves. Viper Sting, for the most part, is great. It lasts the longest. It does the most damage as far as, like, mechanic-wise. I really love Viper Sting. But then look at these two. Can only be used on melee. Can only be used on spellcasters. I don't think this is going to work. I don't like this. I don't like how this works. I would much rather see these two do something very similar to Viper Sting. You know, make it last 12 seconds and make it something that can benefit regardless of what you're fighting against. Make this basically flavor of the month for the hunter. Make it be like, okay, you can use either one of these three in any situation. They'll, all three of them would, would benefit you regardless of what you're playing against. Because in a BG especially, I mean, you know, in arenas you can obviously change these. In duels you can change these. But in world PvP or BGs especially, you pick one of these. Well, if I pick Spider Sting, you know what I mean? But then I end up like, you know, I'm sitting Lumber Mill or I'm sitting Stable or something. And I get jumped by like a Rogue and a Feral Druid. This isn't going to help me. This isn't going to help me in the slightest. You can't spell, you can't silence melee abilities, so what the hell? You know what I mean? So, I would much rather see these get tweaked, and that's what I did. I changed these to where they'd be beneficial regardless of what you're fighting against. Survival Tactics has its flaws, and I'll explain why when I show you my changes. Cat-like reflexes is garbage, so I changed this to something more beneficial. Dragon Skull Armor is nice, but this really needs to get tweaked a little bit, I feel. Because, I mean, magical damage is nice, but, I mean, again, this isn't going to help you against every... You know, this can this should be, like, you know, another flavor of the month. You know what I'm saying? These should all benefit you regardless of what you're fighting. Okay? So, that being said, everything else in here is pretty solid except for these last two abilities. These desperately needed to get replaced. So, that's what I came up with. I came up with some brand new awesome abilities. So, let's get to it. Alright, so this is the honor talents as I have them. For BM. The first thing I want to mention is the number tweaks on these second row of abilities. I increased the haste from 6% to 8% and I reduced the cancellation duration from 8 seconds and I reduced it to 6 seconds. So like, because these felt like garbage before. Now they don't feel so much like garbage. Um, moving on to the next row, I tweaked all these abilities. From everything down I tweaked. The last four rows on all tiers, all specs, I changed them. Okay, so Dragon Skill Armor, now you take 20% less damage from all damage over time effects. All damage over time effects. Now, this obviously is probably a little OP now that I think about it. So, let's say let's say we take 10% less damage from all damage over time effects. Not just magical effects. Because I felt like this could only be useful against three people. This would only be useful against... You know, as the way Blizzard had it designed, it was only going to be useful against Shadow Priest, Boomkins, and Affliction Warlocks. Like, that's not, that's, 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 no, that's, that's terrible. So, I felt like this could benefit from affecting all damage over time effects. That way, you know, if you were facing up against, like, you know, a Rogue Feral Comp or something or something like that, this could actually benefit you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could reduce those bleed damages a little bit and those poisons, not just magical effects. Um, the next one I changed, Catholic Reflexes. Now, I really liked the change I made to this. When you're hit by a melee strike, not a critical, but any melee attack, when you're hit by a melee strike, you gain 50% dodge, chance, and armor for 3 seconds. This can only occur every 30, once every 30 seconds. So, essentially, you know, you go into a fight, and then a warrior charges in on you, he hits you, well, once he hits you one time, you now have a 50% chance to dodge everything he throws at you for three seconds. And if he does manage to hit you, you have 50% increased armor during those three seconds, too. Now, it's not a long time, but it's better than the garbage, you know, 30% chance after getting critically hit. Because the whole point of this was, is to avoid getting critically hit, you know what I'm saying? So, this needed to get a slight buff 
Because before, hell, dragon scale armor was way better than this originally. You never took this in the original tier. Now you're actually like, hmm, I might actually want to take this. Okay, so now survival tactics. Remember how I said this had a hole in its, in its design? If you were to go up against a Shadow Priest and he were to say Shadow Word Pain and then Vampiric Touch you, guess what? If you use this after that fact, as it currently is on live or on the beta, either one, you get horrified right out of your Fiend Death. Like, you don't even get a chance, which is basically makes your Fiend Death worthless. Same thing with UA. If you were to use this to get rid of a UA, you take like a, you know, a crap ton of damage because you just purge that UA off yourself. So what this would do is this would give us a way to get magical effects off of us without being afraid to use Fiend Death. So we wouldn't feel trapped on when and where we could use Fiend Death anymore. We could actually use it because it would grant an immunity to all magic effects for that same 1.5 second duration on top of reducing damage. So there you go. Alright, so the next thing I want to go over is the stains. Okay, this is what I was talking about. These were... Viper Sting was really nice, Scorpion Sting was alright, Spider Sting was alright, but they but these two could only be used against certain comps. Also, I want to talk about the delivery. Before, these required you to use Cobra Shot, or Raptor Strike, or even Aim Shot if you were a marksmanship. So now, I've changed them to where you don't have to worry about delivery, because it will always be there. Check this out. Your Auto Shot poisons the target, lowering their healing done by 25%, down from 30%, it was a little overpowered. For the next 12 seconds these applications do not stack so what i mean by do not stack is if you've got like you know five hunters in a, in a in a battleground and they all have viper sting well it doesn't matter if they're hitting all hitting the same target only one viper sting is going to be applied to the target and it'll just get refreshed every time they hit that target with an auto attack or an auto shot there you go that actually gives it some credence you could actually spread this around in an entire arena without having to worry about running out of focus this basically just gives the hunter great utility because and it eliminates the whole factor of not being able because like like I said you had to sit there and channel an aim shot for two seconds is marksmanship whereas in survival or beast mastery just one button on demand instant cast boom instantly applied so to fix that problem just make it auto shots and auto attacks across the board done that way you don't have to think about it alright so the next one is scorpion sting I changed this to where your auto shots poison the target for the next 12 seconds, lowering their damage output by 10%. Again, these applications do not stack. So, if you're not trying to reduce healing the target does, but you're just looking to reduce the damage the target is doing to you or your partners, Scorpion Sting all the way. So now this will always be beneficial to you. Alright, so now let's look at Spider Sting. And this is not just melee, by the way. This is melee or spell cast. So this is beneficial regardless of what you're fighting. Again, you could actually use this against any comp. Spider Sting. Your auto shot poisons the target for the next 12 seconds, increasing damage taken by 10%. Again, applications do not stack. So this is basically your version of, say, you know, expose. this is like exposed weakness from back in the day. You know, increases damage done to the target. Period. End of discussion. So there you go. To me, this is awesome. Like, you actually have three awesome mechanics to choose from. You can reduce healing the target does, you can reduce the damage they're putting out, or you can increase the damage they're taking. Really awesome mechanics here. Really love this change that I found. What do you guys think? Check the comment section, let me know. Alright, so for Beast Within, I didn't change this at all. I left it as it was, reduces the cooldown of Beast Your Wrath by 30 seconds. While active, you become immune to fear and horror effects. Fine and dandy with that. Now, I did change separation anxiety a little bit. Uh, the initial part I left it alone, you're, when your pet is attacking a target by itself without your assistance for 5 seconds it becomes enraged, increasing its damage by 50%, but I added this part, and your pet becomes immune to crowd control effects. Attacking your pet's target calms it down, removing the enraged effect. This was really nice, except as soon as somebody saw it get enraged, they would CC it, and if they CC'd it long enough, well guess what, the enraged effect went away. So. This actually makes this viable now, so I really like this change. Uh, Wild Protector, no change to this one except for I increased the radius from, you know, 8 yards to 10 yards. It's not much, but I felt like 8 yards wasn't quite enough, whereas in 10 yards is good. So this basically means everything on a 20 yard diameter is going to get that 15% reduction in damage. This really makes this more, this actually makes this very, very, very viable now. Alright, 
Go for the throat, again, another option I didn't change. This is basically kill shot for BM hunters. When kill command, when you kill command a target below 30% health, the cooldowns instantly reset. So you can just spam kill command all day long. All right, so now, these two right here. Remember these two abilities? Dire Beast Hawk and Dire Beast Basilisk. Remember all the issues I had with them in the, uh, in the video I made for BM? Well, these are the changes I came up with. Hungry Gaze. Your pet's hungry gaze intimidates the target, allowing your primary pet, and only your primary pet, to bypass 50% of the target's armor. Plate wearers, leather wearers, mail wearers, cloth wearers, doesn't matter. They will bypass 50% of the target's armor all the time. But just your primary pet. Not your, not, not Haiti, not your dire beast, just your primary pet. Okay, so the next one that's going to replace Basilisk, I came up with Beast from the East. You summon an improved Dire Beast. This creature mirrors your primary pet's every move, dealing damage equal to your primary pet as well. Last 30 seconds, 2 minute cooldown. Now this is a Dire Beast. This is not a actual pet. This is not like your primary pet. This is not like Haiti. So they don't benefit from Bestial Wrath. Okay? It does not benefit from Bestial Wrath. Okay? All it does is it just mirrors your pet's damage and does the exact same damage your pet's doing. But now, if your pet's under the effects of, of Beast of Wrath, whatever, pets you're dam whatever damage your pet's doing, this pet will do the same. This Dire Beast will do that same damage. So, in a way, in a roundabout way, you could actually make this benefit from Beast of Wrath. But again, this is much, much better than Basilisk because it would actually stay on the target because it's, like it's like a normal Dire Beast. Those are the changes I came up with for the honor talents. All right, marksmanship. Again, marksmanship is probably the worst spec in the entire game right now. It has a ton of holes, a ton of problems. So let's go ahead and just jump in head first. This applies to both aim shot and wind burst. These abilities need to be castable while moving. I don't care what Blizzard does. I don't care who's bitching about it. The fact that we have to sit still for this right now is terrible it's a horrible change aim shot and wind burst both need to be castable while moving that's all I'm gonna say you leave your cast down where they're at but make them castable while moving alright so bursting shot no longer baseline it's gonna end up being in the talents buffed by the way and bring scatter shot back put it baseline in here so now instead of bursting shot we get scatter shot back as it currently is in the honor talents you know the whole 20 second cooldown you know 20 yard range disorients the target for four seconds and also removes all damage over time effects so basically an interrupt and also something that you can use to set up your additional crowd controls okay so that's what scatter shot needs to be and it needs to be a baseline marksmanship ability instead of this piece of crap bursting shot alright now remember what I said about exhilaration replace this with spirit bond and if you take Lone Wolf, grants you access to exhilaration, right? Now, as far as everything else in here, most of these stay put. Sidewinders, piercing shot, trick shot, these all stay. Camouflage also will be baseline. I, I forgot to mention that. Another baseline ability, but only baseline for marksmanship is camouflage. Aside from that, everything in here either gets... Everything in here just gets tweaked. Just gets tweaked. Except for Sentinel. I actually replace it. I swap it I swapped Sentinel and Sniper Shot from the Honor Talents. I literally swapped those, and you'll see why later. I actually changed Sentinel outright. All right, so let's move on to what I would have done. Starting with Lone Wolf, increase your damage by 15%. I actually reduced this from 18% to 15%, but now you, as the Hunter, have all damage done to you decreased by 10%. So now you don't. Now those you know Hunters in PvP. If they take Lone Wolf, could actually take Lone Wolf because now they don't have to be so guilty about losing, you know, Roar Sacrifice. Because the Roar Sacrifice is 20% reduction and it guarantees you can't be crit. But at least this way, Lone Wolf is a passive 10% reduction in damage. And it's actually a caveat to the old days because you used to be able to take Lone Wolf and then turn around and take Aspect of the Iron Hawk. So this is, you know, pretty much just combining those two. Steady Focus. I changed this from the garbage that it is currently. To this, after standing still in combat for two seconds, your focus regeneration and haste is increased by 4%, stacking up to five times. Buff remains indefinitely as long as you remain stationary, but lasts six seconds while moving. So, PvE, this would be awesome to have, 
This would be like the old steady focus we used to have, or, you, or even the improved hawk or aspect of the hawk we used to have way back in the day. Love this change. Really think this needs to happen. Uh, but it can also be useful in PvP as well. In the two seconds, that's just long enough for you to you know move real quick for four, three or four seconds, sit up for two seconds, get the buff to re reapply, and then just keep moving. All right, so careful aim. You have a 20% chance, 20% increased critical strike chance against vulnerable targets. So also, all critical strikes now deal 30% additional damage over 8 seconds. As a bleed, any remaining damage will be added when refreshed. So this buffs the hell out of careful aim. Instead of the whole retarded, you know, targets of 80% health apply a bleed, whereas in Beast Mastery benefits from it the most because of your mastery, getting your dire free dire beast and dire frenzy procs back this doesn't aid marksmanship at all so this actually being tied into vulnerable and actually giving you a bleed really really changes the whole dynamic of this and makes this very viable okay so love these three changes lock and load okay th so this stayed somewhat the same mechanically but i changed this percentage and how to activate it your auto shots multi shots and arcane shots now have a 4% chance to trigger lock and load. Okay, so originally this was just auto shots and it was 8%, but your auto shots were literally going off every like 2.9 seconds. That was terrible. That's a terrible RNG. So I would rather, since you're already going to be spamming arcane shots anyway, give us a 4% chance. That way you can actually, because what, what else procs with an arcane shot? Your harness mark does. Well, mark shot isn't available, so now this would actually really help you set up lock and load in conjunction with patient sniper you know what i'm saying so this would really help get rid of the clunkiness and the bad timing that is the combination of lock and load and patient sniper so that's a that's a double whammy loving benefit love this change all right so black arrow the only change i made to this was i increased its duration and reduced its focus cost there's no reason for this to cost 40 focus it don't do near enough damage to cost 40 focus make it 35 like it was and increases duration from 8 to 12 uh, you can leave its damage where it's at, that way it's not like, you know, stupid overpowered. But, I feel like 8 seconds in PvE is not long enough. Make it 12 seconds. And also incorporate, not only when you kill an enemy, Black Arrow's duration is refreshed, but make it to where if Black Arrow is cleansed before its duration ends, their cooldown is refreshed. Just like it was for Survival Hunters and WAD. Alright, True Aim. I liked this from before, but the ramp up time was ridiculous. It took eight shots to get this up. Now I changed it to three percent, and it only has to stack up to five times. So, just reduce the ramp up time, made it fifteen percent outright. Love this change. You can actually—I'll show you guys here in a minute. There's actually a way to really take advantage of true aim, like a lot. Okay, this is the exact same from before. Post taste with the. Movement freedom and movement speed increase, 4% heal, far strider, 50% chance to reset the cooldown and disengage from crits, also increases the distance, sure footed, 25% chance to resist movement pairing effects, and also reduces disengages cooldown by 10 seconds. So these stayed the same, okay? And it's going to be the same for survival, except instead of disengage, it's going to be a harpoon. Alright, so let's move on to the change. Explosive shot. Got rid of that, that retarded aesthetic nightmare that was explosive shot currently on the beta and live and gave us something that just buffed the crap out of aim shot you attach an explosive charge to your mun an explosive charge to your munition aim shot now deals 100 percent increased damage to your primary target and deals damage to all near the target all enemies near the target ba damage of course based on proximity so this basically just turns aim shot into explosive shot it busts the crap out of aim shots damage you know what I'm saying? It's not quite as much as it would be for Patient Sniper, but you still get vulnerability 75% on top of this. But Mark Shot's not buffed from Patient Sniper either, so you only get the 75% from Mark Shot, but you get like 175% from Aim Shot. So that's a trade-off. Do you want to put all your eggs in one basket with Aim Shot, or do you want to be a mix and match with your Mark Shots and Aim Shots? Patient Sniper didn't get changed at all. I left it as it was, because I with the, chain, with the new change to Lock and Load, I really feel like Pace and Sniper can really gain a benefit from this. But, you guys see what I'm talking about with Explosive Shot, with True Aim, that would be an awesome combo. Now that Aim Shot would be castable while moving, that'd be 115% more damage from Aim Shot, plus the 75% from Vulnerability. 
That's a 190% damage increase for just aim shot. That would be awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and look at sniper shot. What I'm getting at here is that this would give you two very viable options. This makes explosive shot very viable. All right, sniper shot. I remember I told you guys I switched Sentinel. I traded positions with Sentinel and sniper shot from the honor talent because sniper shot didn't belong in the honor talent. It had no business being there. It's a PVE ability, and this is the changes that I made to it. You take a sniper stance, firing a well-aimed shot, dealing heavy damage, and ignoring 50% of the target's armor. So, you're a sniper, you're sitting there for an extended period of time, you find a weakness in the target's armor, and you exploit it. Completely fits the fantasy. But, here's the changes that I made. Well, additional changes that I made. It not only increases the range of all your shots, but also increases the damage of all your shots by 40% for 12 seconds. So now you have a passive... 40% increase to all your damage as long as you maintain this buff. It's a 40 second cost, 2.5 second cast, it's a 9 second cooldown. So, you can actually maintain this for a full 9 seconds before you gotta cast this again. So this is really lovely. So again, I digress. You can have 75% to aim shot and mark shots damage with vulnerability, and then you can have another 40% to every other shot, including mark shot or not mark shot, including arcane shot, multi shot, so on and so forth. Barrage, crows, I mean all these get buffed. You know what I'm saying? So, I really, 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 really love the change to this sniper shot. This really makes this row really just kinda, you know, it's just, it's whatever you, whatever your flavor of the month is gonna be really because all three of these are dead even I feel. Like, the damage from patient sniper only benefits, you know, mark shot and aim shot. Sniper shot's only gonna is gonna benefit, but you know, sniper shot's gonna benefit everything. Whereas an explosive shot's just gonna benefit aim shot. So it's just whatever you want to do, man. However you want to play it. But you do have to sit still for sniper shot. This is not a castable while moving. This you have to be standing still for this. All right, so this row binding shot wave machine stayed the same. Uh, well, binding shot stayed the same. I did, however, just like in BM, wave machine's a 30 second cooldown instant cast. So move on. Bursting shot. This is what I mean by buffing bursting shot. I brought this down here and I buffed it to the following. Assault targets 15 yards in front of you with a violent spread of buckshot, knocking them back and dazing them for 6 seconds. 30 second cooldown. So essentially, take Typhoon from the uh, Druids talent trees and brought it down here. And made, it, and made bursting shot do something very similar to Typhoon. This would actually aid you in PvE a lot more than it would PvP because... PvP players, you know, people can, you know, close the distance. If, if you're just 15 yards away, you're still on range of a charge, you're still on range of a shadow step, but in PvE, this would really aid you because you would knock something, you know, a whole group of mobs back for six seconds. It'd give you long enough time to, you know, disengage away, create some distance, maybe, maybe you know, set up a misdirection so you can get the threat off of you and back onto your pet, or maybe enough time for you to, some, you know, revive your pet if your pet's dead. Or if you're not running Lone Wolf, or if, you're or if you're running Lone Wolf, it'll give you enough time to get away and, you know, get Black Arrow back off cooldown. So, I really love this change to Bursting Shot, making it spread 15 yards instead of the measly, like, 2 inches that it is now. Really love this change. Uh, this tier, no changes, of course. Leave this exactly the way it is. Sidewinders. The only thing I changed about Sidewinders was two things. One, this ability should not require line of sight. I mean, look, just look at the name. It's called a Sidewinder for a reason. Sidewinders can cut corners, they can turn sharp. I mean, to me, Sidewinders requiring line of sight just doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the narrative. So, the attack doesn't require line of sight, and I also reduce its cooldown from 12 seconds to 8 seconds. But, obviously, you'd have to reduce its damage, but it can automatically apply vulnerable, and it's an 8 second cooldown. It doesn't require line of sight. Generates 50 focus still. To me, that's an absolute must change for Sidewinders, because right now, even in PvP, this is just not that great. Okay? Piercing Shot, I did make one change to this. I increased its maximum damage. Uh, it doesn't really say it, but pay attention to that focus cost. Originally, it's only 20 to 100 focus. Now, you can spend 20 to 120 focus. Now, for those of you that aren't aware of this, Marksmanship Hunters get 120 focus baseline. So, this actually increases the damage potential of piercing shot. So, 
This is awesome. Love this, love this, love this, love this change. Really taking advantage of the play style and the mechanic of having additional focus. All right, so trick shot. I changed this to being old school multi-shot. Get this. Multi-shot now deals five times more damage and also benefits from vulnerable, but now has a half second cast time, costs 40 focus, and has a six second cooldown. Okay, so what, what we're talking about here is multi-shot now having, multi-shot would now do, you know, 300% damage, slightly more than aim shot, and now also benefits from vulnerable, which includes patient sniper, by the way, but it has a half second cast time, cost 40 focus, and has a six second cooldown. So unlike aim shot, which you could inevitably just spam back to back because it doesn't have a cooldown, you can't do that with multi-shot. But this pays homage to old school marksmanship hunters from way back in vanilla where you always set up that aim shot, multi-shot combo. This would actually give you that option. And actually, trick shot would actually help you fill in the gaps where, say, mark shot's not available to you. You know what I'm saying? Or say you don't have enough time to get that aim shot off, but you can stop for like a quick half second and get that multi-shot off to take advantage of Patient Sniper's, you know, debuff on the target. So, love this, love this, love this change. What do you guys think about the Marksmanship Hunter changes that I've come up with? Do you guys like them? You don't like them? Go to the comment section let me know what you think. All right, so let's move on to the Honor Talents for Marksmanship. Let me get a quick shot of that sweet tea, boys. All right, again, here's a quick glance. Like I said, Scatter Shot would be baseline now. And Sniper Shot would now be in the talent trees instead of the PvP trees because that just that has no business being in the PvP tree. TNT would get completely replaced because Bursting Shot would no longer be in, would no longer be baseline. And like I said, these first four rows, we've already gone over the changes to these, so let's go ahead and get into what I'd like to see done. So the first four rows, again, exactly the same. Auto Shots, Poisons, Auto Shots, Poisons, Auto Shot, Poisons. Immunity to magic for 1.5 seconds, 50% dodge and armor for 3 seconds after being hit by melee can only happen every 30 seconds. And this is overpowered right now, I know, but just imagine this was, I was just copying and pasting and just changing the mechanic, I didn't change the percentage. So imagine this being like, you know, 10 or 12%, not 20%, okay? So just ignore the 20%, imagine it's more like 10%, that would be okay. Alright, so let's move on to the last two rows. Okay, so... I, instead of having, you know, some, what was here before, oh yeah, TNT. To replace TNT, Marshmanship didn't have any kind of defensive options in this tier, so I actually brought us a defensive. Check this out. Slow and steady reduces the cooldown of aspect of the turtle by 50%. However, this also reduces the duration by 50% as well. So, currently, aspect of the turtle does exactly what Disengage used to do. It's a three minute cooldown, but it lasts eight seconds. This actually reduces its cooldown by 50%, making it a 90 second cooldown. So it's not two charges, it's just one. But it's a 90 second cooldown, but it only lasts four seconds instead of eight seconds. What do you guys think? I love that change. I think that's awesome. I think the fact that BM has the whole 15% damage reduction from their pets, as long as they're near them at all times, or whether they're within 10 yards of their pet, that's awesome. Marksmanship really needed something like that, so I thought this would be a great addition. Great change. Alright, so Spray and Pray. That used to be up right here. I moved it up here, and I made the following change. Multi-Shot and Sidewinders now also reduce the movement speed of all targets hit by 15% for 6 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. Also reduces the cooldown of Sidewinders by 30%. Now that I'm thinking about it, the fact that I made Sidewinders a baseline 8 second cooldown this probably needs to be reduced from 30 percent to 25 percent that way it's an even two seconds which would make it line up with the whole 15 percent reduction in speed for six seconds so i think that would really benefit from this really like this change this would actually give you an option since we don't have freeze traps anymore obviously this would actually or or, or snake traps or or not back traps or anything like that this would actually give you the the option to you know just constantly keep your target slowed at a distance with your multi shots now obviously you couldn't do this if you took trick shot multi shot would still slow the target but you wouldn't be able to stack it you know what I'm saying so spray and pray wouldn't necessarily be for you but if you took sidewinders you definitely could use spray and pray just like if you took piercing shot you could definitely use spray and pray you see what I mean this is like this is the whole 
you know, concept of being able to pick and choose different talents instead of everything just being cookie cutter. All right, so let's move on to Freezing Arrow. This one pretty much stayed the same, except I changed one or a couple things to this. Uh, originally, it didn't remove damage over time effects, and it wasn't castable while moving. Okay, so that's the two changes I made. Fires a frozen arrow, incapacitating the target and all nearby enemies within 6 yards of the target for 8 seconds. Removes all damage over time effects. Any damage caused will break the ice. It's a 2 second cast time. It's usable while moving. And instead of being a 45 second cooldown, I made it a 30 second cooldown. I don't think it's necessary to be a 45 second cooldown. I think making this 30 seconds is plenty viable. Uh, honestly, if you want to make it 45 seconds, I'm cool with that. But I just felt like 30 seconds would make the most sense. Because, I mean, look what you're giving up. I mean, you're giving up slow and steady, spray and pray. If you made this 45 seconds, I'd almost feel like you'd have to take these two. You know what I mean? Make this 30 seconds to kind of even this tier out a little bit. All right? So let's go ahead and move on down to the last tier. True Shot Mastery. Okay, so this originally was not bad. But I felt like True Shot was not really effective enough. All it does is increase haste, which in PvP, there's a haste cap anyway so that's pretty substandard so I changed it to add a little something special for us reduces the cooldown true shot by 30 seconds also during true shot duration all damage you do is increased by 10 percent yeah that that was that was a necessary change make tr give true shot a damage buff it really needed that uh, true shot will instantly restore hundred percent of your focus which true shot mastery already did before so the only thing I added here was that 10% increased damage during true shots duration sentinel this is the big change I brought this out of the original talent train I brought it down here and replaced it with or swapped it out with sniper shot and brought it in here now look at the change I made increases your vigilance allowing you to see enemies who are in stealth and invisible last 10 seconds 30 second cooldown so you, you guys know how like demon hunters can see things behind walls in stealth and invisible. This would give you that option. Okay? So this would give hunters only marksmanship hunters that ability. I mean, my god, do y'all even know what sentinels, like not you guys, not the viewers, but I mean like, does, did Blizzard even know what sentinel stood for? You know what I'm saying? Like in the dictionary? It's, 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 a, it's, it's a guard in a watch post in a tower with a spotlight. You know what I'm saying? Shining light. You know, seeing where things are at, you're going to tell me that, you know, giving us, uh, you know, activating a free hunter's mark is the best you can come up with? I don't think so. Move this in the PvP tree and make it viable for PvP. There you go. There's a viable option. So, on top of the flare, marksman and ship hunters would get this, right? But you're like, Zara, that's overpowered. Mm, but look what you'd be giving up. You'd be giving up true shot mastery and... Our personal favorite for us old school marksmanship hunters, kill shot. Bring kill shot back. You attempt to finish off a wounding target with a precision shot. This damage is always a critical. If the target does not die from kill shot, the cooldown is reduced by 30 seconds. Can only be used on targets below 20% health. Instant cast, 45 second cooldown. No heal this time. No instant, you know, cooldown refreshed if the target doesn't die. But it does reduce the cooldown to like... 15 seconds if the target doesn't die. That way it'll come off cooldown faster. So this is not overpowered like it was before. It's actually makes you think about when and where you're going to want to use it. So I really think this on top of Sentinel and the buff to True Shot Mastery really makes this last row really hard to choose what you want. You know what I'm saying? I really think this would be a hard choice to make. So going between all these changes like I said the first four rows are the same as before on top of these two these two rows changes what do you guys think take the comment section let me think let me know what you think now we're gonna move into the survival hunters okay so this is gonna be the tr this is gonna be the tier everybody was probably waiting for like, Zara, what would you do about survival hunters honestly not a whole lot uh, the only thing baseline I would change about survival that I can really think of right now again Spirit Bond, get rid of Exhilaration, bring us the passive Spirit Bond back, and uh, Hatchet Toss. Yeah, this was it. Hatchet Toss needs to be where it automatically activates if a target is outside melee range. Like, let this automatically activate as an auto attack. That's the only. That's the only difference. That's the only change I'd make. This one with Explosive Trap, get rid of Explosive Trap, Dragon's Fire Grenade, baseline abilities for Survival Hunters, Explosive Trap. 
get rid of this, or better yet, incorporate Dragon's Fire Grenade into it. So now, instead of just throwing it five yards on the ground, you can actually throw this as a grenade, actually at a target, because if you look at this, it does damage, and it causes additional damage, right? So it's, it's, it's instant damage, and then it's the dot. Well, if you take Expert Trapper, Explosive Trap deals damage to the triggering enemy. So the problem is, is that with Expert Trapper, you have to... There's no way to guarantee who the triggering enemy is going to be. That's the problem with this. So I say incorporate Dragon's Fire's grenades, you know, ability to, you know, guarantee what target you're throwing it to. That way you can really isolate the damage and where it's going. Because right now you can't really do that, which really limits your burst potential as Survival Hunter. So let's get rid of Dragon's Fire Grenade out of the talent trees, incorporate its mechanic into Explosive Trap. You can keep the cooldown and everything exactly the same. Just change Explosive Trap's name to Dragon's Fire Grenade and allow it to be thrown at a single target just like Dragon's Fire Grenade. So let's move on to what I would rather see have them do for survival. Check this out. Alright, so Camouflage. Moved it from the crowd control tier because I went ape donkey manure on this. There's no reason for this to be in the CC tier. So move this up here. You know what I'm saying? And I brought Steady Focus into the survival tree and left way of Machnathal. So Camouflage does what it's always done. You go into Stealth, you and your pet. Heals you for 2% every 1 second. But, I did add this. The next attack out of Camouflage will deal 50% increased damage. Now this is gonna, this, this would be baseline for Marksmanship Hunters, remember that. This would be baseline for Marksmanship Hunters. But for Survival, they can have it, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be a talent. Alright, Steady Focus for Survival Hunters. Reduces the focus cost of all your abilities by 20%. Okay? This was a awesome idea that I came up with when I first started looking at this. I was like, man, Survival's got some really, really crappy focus regeneration. They just, like, they have to depend on using Mongoose Bite to really, like, wait for their focus. It gives an up. Uh, spamming Mongoose Bite doesn't cost any focus, so that's literally the only time your focus is going to come up. But this would actually help you you know, make up for having so, a lot of focus being spent and not really feeling like you were doing anything besides just waiting for focus to come back. This would really aid you. You wouldn't get the heal and you wouldn't get the damage increase from Way of Machnathal but you would, however, have a little bit more control over how much focus you're spending. Now, as far as Way of Machnathal, the only thing I'd change here is the ramp up time. Instead of being 3% up to 4 times, make it 4% up to 3 times. Just Again, with the ramp up time. There's no need to have that much ramp up time. There's just no need in that. I mean, survival's already got a crap ton of ramp up time that it is with, with, with Mongoose Bite. Don't don't make that built into Way of Muckmuth all. Alright, so Murderer Crow stays the same. Snake Hunter stays the same. Mortal Wounds. I did change one thing to this. Again, last rate, when it deals damage, has a 2% chance you gain a free charge of Mongoose Bite. But, I added this. Also, any special ability will now refresh last rate's duration on the target. So, anytime you use, say, Raptor Strike, Mongoose Bite, Flanking Strike, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. If last rate's on that target, it will automatically refresh. So, you don't have to waste 35 focus and another global cooldown to reapply a 10 second dot. That was just stupid. So, since Mortal Wounds was the weakest thing in this tier, I really felt like adding just that little bit of a change would really make Mortal, Mortal Wounds really, you know, viable option here. That would really aid you in keeping Way of Machnathal up instead of having to waste another, you know, two and a half, two, two and a half seconds to reapply, you know, reapply Way of Machnathal either before or after reapplying last week. So, I really felt like taking Way of Machnathal and then taking Mortal Wounds would be a great way to go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can still go either way. You can take any talent, whatever you want, but that would be a great combo because if you do that currently you're really hurting yourself because you're like crap I gotta keep reapplying last rate anyway but now I've also gotta reapply freaking you know Raptor Strike for way I'm on the because it's gotta ramp up four times instead of just three but now with these two two brief little changes changes the whole aspect of the spec alright and how, how the delivery is done alright so these are the exact same as they were but instead of affecting disengage they affect harpoon okay now one thing to note Far Strider was increasing the the travel distance of Disengage. Well, now it increases the range of Harpoon by 5 yards. So instead of being 40 yards, it's a 45-yard charge. Now, Post Haste grants you a 4% heal every time you Harpoon, but since, Harp, since Survival Hunters have artifact traits that basically instantly refresh the 
cooldown of Harpoon, this can only happen once every 20 seconds. So this can't happen like, you know, you kill a couple of targets every, you know, seven or eight seconds. You, like, dot one up, dot another one up, and you're getting, like, you know, three or four Harpoons in the span of, like, you know, 20 or 30 seconds. You're not going to get, like, 15, 20 percent of your health back. No, it's not going to work like that. You only get that 4% heal every 20 seconds, period, in discussion, okay? All right, so, again, these are the exact same in every every spec. Uh, as far as this tier goes, I did change a couple things. All right, so this gets changed from improved traps to improved tactics because Dragon's Fire Grenade is not a trap. So just change the name and have it reduce the cooldown on Dragon's Fire Grenade by 50%. Easily done. Now that, it, now that Explosive Trap is gone and Dragon's Fire Grenade replaced it, there you go. So it does the same function. Caltrops, the only thing I did on this is increase its duration to 20 seconds because right now it doesn't last very long and it really feels like this just isn't effective at all because it's, it doesn't last long enough whereas in Tar Trap would last for 30 seconds. So increase its duration, make its duration rival that of Tar Trap. That way you can actually get two of these on the ground at once because they only have a 12 second cooldown and it lasts for 20 seconds. So you can spread more area with this, whereas in Tar Trap, if you took improved tactics, you could actually cover, you know, over freaking, you know, 30 yards in Tar and just snare and root and slow for days. So this would actually make this more viable. Steel Trap, I would change one thing, reduce its damage a little bit and make it a 30 second cooldown instead of a minute. That's just retarded. There's no reason for it to last to be that long a cooldown. Because nobody's going to take this outside of a dueling area because you're, you're going to use Freeze Trap more often than not. But if you made Steel Trap actually a 30 second cooldown, there would probably be comps where this would actually be viable. Really like this as long as it's not a one minute cooldown. It still replaces Freeze Trap, but reduces damage a little bit and make it a 30 second cooldown instead of one minute. Alright, so as far as this tier goes, Ranger's Net stays the same. And, but I got rid of Sticky Bomb and I replaced it with this, Flash Bang. You throw a Flash Grenade at the target location, disorienting everyone within 5 yards of the explosion for 6 seconds. It's a Flash Grenade. It's exactly what it is. It takes, it takes Sticky Bomb and it makes it, you know, better. It makes it what it should be. Without doubt. Without a question. But this is a 45 second cooldown as opposed to a 30 second cooldown. So, there is that. Alright, so now Bola Throw. You hurl a Bola towards your enemy, entangling them in its snare, knocking them down to the ground, and stunning them for 3 seconds. 30 second cooldown. This is essentially Storm Bolt for a survival hunter. That's exactly what this is. But it fits the narrative, it fits the fantasy, it's a Bola. Everybody knows what a Bola is. You throw it, wrap it around your ankles or your hands or whatever, and it enables your enemy. They fall down to the ground, they knock themselves unconscious, they're stunned for 3 seconds. However you want to narrate it in your head, that's what this will do. Alright, so let's move on to the next row. Butchery and Serpent Sting say the exact same. Raptor Strike and Carve and Flick Serpent Sting Dot. Butchery is an AoE that has three charges, does moderate damage. But then I took throwing action from up here and I moved it down here. And I increased its charge to three instead of two. That way it's actually on even, even ground with these other two. So you can do single target damage with a brand new ability. Or you can do AoE, more powerful AoE damage as opposed to carve. Or you can do, you can just have extra dot damage from Raptor Strike or Carve. It's up to you. This is a very, this is a very viable row now. This has really got a very distinct play play style. Do you want to focus on doing single target damage? Do you want to focus on spreading dot damage? Or do you want to focus on just doing, you know, burst AE damage? Alright, so this next row, I took Animal Instincts from the top, and I brought it down here, and I changed it drastically. And then I changed this. This is very similar to what I did with Improved Tactics. I just called this Improved Survivalist. Let me move down here so you guys can actually see this. Alright, so the following abilities are improved. Freeze Trap, stay the same. Dragon's Fire Grenade, increased damage is exactly like Explosive Trap. I just renamed it Dragon's Fire Trap because I got, I just renamed Explosive Trap Dragon's Fire Grenade and gave Explosive Trap the throwing mechanic. Tar trap stayed the same, steel trap stayed the same, cow trap stayed the same. So the only reason again that this got changed its name is because of the fact that it's Dragon's Fire Grenade now instead of Explosive Trap. Aspect of the Beast, 
exactly the same buffs that Beast Mastery had, except now it's being applied to Survivalist. You get a uh, bleed damage from Ferocity Pets with a minor heal. You get reduced damage for you and your pet from a Tenacity Pet. And Cunning Pets a perma slow every time Flanking Strike is off cooldown. Right? Flanking Strike gives you these buffs. Now, Animal Instincts. Flanking Strike now also grants you instincts of your pet for 7 seconds, providing one of the following combat enhancements. Now, this was here before, but I changed it from giving you Mastery, Movement Speed, or Haste. I changed it to this. Instincts of the Turtle increases Arm by 75%. Instincts of the Monkey increases Dodge by 20%. And Instincts of the Mongoose increases Parry by 20%. I really feel like this would really aid Survival Hunters a ton, especially in PvP, because of the fact that they are so dead gum squishy. This would really help a lot in melee combat. The fact that they're in melee all the time now, this would really aid them a lot. Okay? So what do you guys think? This is the uh, this is the changes that I came up with for survival. There's not really a whole lot of over-the-top changes, especially in this, these first four rows. It just changed some, you know, changed some names, maybe added one little mechanic here and there. Same thing with these down here, just switched these and added one additional charge, but the CCs got changed, animal instincts got completely changed, and, you know, reduced the ramp up time from way of Mount Nathal. Steady Focus was brand spanking new, brought this in, changed this, loved this. This basically replaced Spitting Cobra, which was a one minute cooldown that did no, no damage at all, but gave you like three focus a second. So this is basically a nice substitute for that. And it actually works. What do you guys think? Type in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Alright, let's go ahead and move into survival's honor talents. Let's see. It. Well, except for the first two. We'll actually go over the, these two rows. These are actually ranged abilities. But for some reason, Blizzard got lazy and they just copy and paste and they haven't changed them since. It's even this way. And, and, it's, and, they, and, they, and these have stayed in live and beta both. So these need to get changed. Uh, I've already spoken of the error in Blizzard's ways for this. So, remember what I said about Aspect of the Cheetah, though. 1 minute cooldown, 10 second duration, immunity to snares for the first 3 second burst of speed, 90% increase, and then drops off for the last 7 seconds to 30%. So, that's going to change Hunting Pack a lot. It's going to change this mechanic. And you can say bye-bye to Master's Call since it's got incorporated into Aspect of the Cheetah for all Hunters, okay? So, let's go ahead and move into the changes that I'd like to see for Honor Talents. Alright, so, again, these first four stay the same except for these. Instead of auto shots, it's auto attacks for survival hunters, all right, for the stings. Now, change these to melee abilities, hardiness while above 80% health to take 20% less damage. That's what it should always be. Reinforced armor increases health by 10%. And sparring, physical attacks have a 20% chance to be blunted, dealing 50% reduced damage. There you go. These need to happen right now, end of discussion. I don't care who's who in Blizzard's development team. This needs to happen, period. Because survival hunters don't shouldn't even have ranged honor talents here. And these should be these melee ability ones. Okay? Let's move on to the last two rows where the changes were made. Okay, so hunting pack. I changed this to where all members in the party within fifteen yards receive the movement speed increase and immunity to snares from Aspect of the Cheetah. This basically turns your aspect of the cheetah into stampeding roar, removing all snare effects and movement pairing effects and gives the 90% boost and 30% boost to all party members. Yowzer, that is nice. But now look at Mending Bandage. I changed it drastically. Originally this said, you know, instantly cleared all magic and disease effects. Uh-uh. I made this to where it clears all damage overtime effects. Not magic or disease specifically, but all damage overtime effects. It doesn't get you out of, you know, roots or anything or anything like that. It just stops damage over time effects in their tracks and it heals you for 40 percent of you your target's maximum health for 40 percent of their maximum health over six seconds being attacked will stop you from using mending bandage okay so now that i'm looking at this and thinking about it this should probably be a be increased to a 45 second cooldown currently it's 25 seconds but i put here 30 seconds but i think it, if, it, if it's going to do this it needs to be a 45 second cooldown that way it's not overpowered you can't spam it every 30 seconds so I think this would be a great change. You'd actually be able to use this now because as of right now, if you have bleeds or even curses, you can't use this. And there are more bleeds than there are diseases. So it's just it's worthless currently. So this change where it clears just damage over time effects 
would be really nice. Instead of all magics and diseases, just damage over time effects that way it can actually be used in combat. Really like this change. Alright, so got rid of Master's Call and replaced it with Aspect of the Monkey. Check this out. Mongoose Bite charges increased to one. So now instead of only three charges, you have access to four. And also, you and your pet have a 15% additional dodge chance at all times. Really, really, really like this change. However, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that this could really benefit from a slight change. How about instead of the 15% additional dodge chance at all times, how about it just be 15% additional dodge during, say, Mongoose Fury? You know what I'm saying? That would be better, I think. Giving this 15% at all times, probably a little too much. So how about just 15% during Mongoose Fury? You know, the ability that stacks up when you're using Mongoose Bite, it lasts for 12 seconds. So 15% additional dodge chance every 12 seconds. Plus it would also give you a benefit. You don't have to have more than, you only need to hit Mongoose Bite one time. So if you want that additional dodge chance, all you got to do is just apply Mongoose Fury. Just use one charge, which this gives you a free charge. So there you go. All right. So, there's those changes. Let's move on to the bottom row here. Nothing major. Left tracker's not the same. It didn't get changed at all. I did, however, increase the duration of the new improved freezing trap to 6 seconds instead of 5 seconds. That just needed to happen. Sticky Tar, however, did get a change. Instead of just slowing melee attacks, it now also reduces spell casting speed by 50% for 5 seconds. So, that's it for Survival Boys. Those are the changes that I made. Make Sticky Tar viable for spellcasters and melee. Make Diamond Eyes 6 second duration instead of just 5. I mean, come on. Cyclone is 6 seconds. Let's just make the, let's just make Freezing Trap basically Cyclone. And then Tracker's Net left it the same. Change this, change, switch up this entire row. And this is a brand new ability I came up with. It's a homage to old school aspect of the monkey. But now this entire row is viable. You can have Stampeding Roar or freedom from snares for every one minute or you can have you know clears all dots and heals for 40 percent health or you can have an additional charge of the mongoose bite and a 15 percent increased dodge chance during mongoose fury there you go guys that's it those are all my changes that's that's how i would want to see things get done that's how i would want to see things get changed if you guys want to see my recommendations for artifact traits go watch the actual marksmanship beast mastery and survival guides and reviews I actually go into those during the artifact traits portion of those videos but I promised that I would go over these changes that I'd hope and like to see Blizzard do I'm gonna go ahead and post this tonight and I'm gonna also link all the different posts I've put in the Legion feedback pages if you guys would click on that link please give it a thumbs up on Battle.net and share it on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else you can think of Let's get Blizzard on board with this because hunters are suffering right now. They are really, really, really suffering. I really think just these, just these minor changes, change the baseline abilities to how I said, give Scatter Shot back to Marksmanship Hunters, bring Spirit Bond back as a passive heal. You know what I'm saying? Make Intimidation passive baseline ability for Beast Mastery. Survival needs to have these changes in order to be able to be effective in melee range. So. Just make these changes happen, please, Blizzard, because right now, without them, hunters are really suffering. Anyway, love you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. A lot more of this to come in the future. Love you guys. See you in the next video. Zara out.